Hey everybody, Casey here. Today's video is a little bit different. I have not done a speaking video in ages. So I thought I would do one. And I asked people on Instagram to send through any questions they have. And I got some questions about exercise, nutrition and sleep, which we'll go through today. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and you can comment below if you liked this video and want more speaking videos like this. If you think my t-shirt's pretty cool, you can buy it from my merch, which I will also link. All right, so we're gonna start with the chat about caffeine. I got asked my thoughts on caffeine. So like anything in the diet, I think there's a place for it, as long as there's moderation involved in it. Um, and why do we need moderation with caffeine? Because caffeine um, is fat and water soluble, so it crosses our blood brain barrier quite easily. Um, and it can interfere with our adenosine receptors and adenosine is part of our circadian rhythm and like helps us feel tired and things like that. Um, and caffeine looks very similar to adenosine and it can block our adenosine receptors, which means if you were consuming a lot of caffeine and you block those receptors, um, you're going to need more caffeine to kind of make you feel energized because it's going to make you feel tired. Um, if you're someone who has caffeine and you feel quite jittery or anxious or you feel like it does impact your sleep, um, you might metabolize caffeine quite slowly. And taking a supplement, um, L-theanine, will help with that. Um, and taking L-theanine with caffeine can also help improve your concentration, your focus and your energy as well. Um, so, I mean, caffeine can be found in coffee, can be found in tea, can be found in soft drinks and chocolate. Um, most people generally drink, drink their caffeine. So um, just, yeah, working out how you can regulate your consumption of it. So like a cup of coffee a day, a cup of tea a day um, isn't going to be, you know, overdosing you with caffeine and you can probably feel it in your body. If you feel like you're relying on caffeine to feel energized, that's kind of an indicator that you might be having too much of it. So it might pay for you to have like a week caffeine free or um, just gradually start to reduce your caffeine intake. Obviously caffeine impacts your sleep as well. Um, so just in relation to um, like not drinking caffeine too close to bedtime and caffeine stays in your system for a long time. So trying to you know, keep a good 10 to 12 hours between your last caffeinated consumption and bedtime is probably like a, a good way to go. Um, and you can swap to decaf things, herbal teas, decaf coffee. Decaf coffee is good now. Um, and just reducing things like soft drink anyway, which you probably want to do from your diet. Um, it's quite good actually to, to wait like 90 minutes to two hours from waking before having your first coffee so that your body naturally gets itself energized, um, which is gonna really support your circadian rhythm as well. And coffee contains lots of anti-inflammatory properties and antioxidants, so it has a lot of good nutritional value to it as well. So yeah, in moderation. Um, next question was um, dealing with sugar or chocolate cravings. So, um, it's natural to crave sugar and um, to want it. So sugar is like our, our natural state for sugar is that we feel comfort from it. When we have sugar, we get a dopamine release. So it makes us feel good. Um, but I guess there's different reasons why you're going to crave sugar. So if you're not sleeping well, your hormones that regulate your appetite go off. Um, so when you're tired, you're your hormone regulation is going to be off and you it's going to make you want to crave sugar um because that'll also give you an energy hit as well um and it's it's also kind of got to how the rest of your diet is as well so if you're eating a lot of carbohydrate foods and you're not having much protein or fat well there's not much keeping you full or satisfied so you're hungry again or you feel low on energy so you go looking for the sugary foods as well so making sure you've always got protein and fat in all your meals and snacks is also very helpful um 
and the other thing with sugar is it's often because of that dopamine release when we emotionally eat we generally go towards a sugary type food so just being aware when you're craving it a little bit of self-talk like okay so I feel like chocolate so badly why do I feel like it am I stressed am I sad have I not eaten enough lunch did I not enjoy my lunch so I'm looking for something um, more tasty that I really like so it's having that little bit of self-awareness and self-talk around why you're wanting that because if it's a regular thing it's good to work out that pattern because you might think well what if I have just a bowl of pumpkin soup for lunch maybe I'm not full that's why I always want some chocolate after lunch when I have the, the pumpkin soup or it might be a day when you have a specific meeting that kind of stresses you out and you're like okay so I, I emotionally am dealing with this meeting by eating craving the sugar to help me um so when you're eating sugar and you, and you you can succumb to the the cravings it's perfectly fine and normal to do that you just don't want to make that an everyday thing so it's good to use your mindful eating principles take it away from the packet present it on a plate eat it slowly eat it mindfully be in the moment with it own that you're eating it don't eat it hiding or quickly out of the packet so no one sees um, you want to actually be with it like and fully own that you're doing it don't be in denial about it because if you actually taste the flavors and and enjoy it you're gonna find that craving goes away and the more you eat like that and the less eating with that urgency to get through it you're actually gonna crave it less because you're actually enjoying it when you have it um, but that does take quite a bit of practice um, and other things that can help sugar cravings is adding cinnamon, um, pure cinnamon to your meals and things. Um, maybe water with a bit of lemon or lime might help. Um, but I'd say the best thing is to eat it mindfully and just to have a little bit of a chat about t to yourself about, all right, why do I want the chocolate? Am I emotionally eating? Is it a hunger thing? Is it because it's there? Um, and even if it's there, do you have to eat it? Like you can always go get more. It doesn't matter if someone else beats you to it. All right, next question is, when is the best time to exercise? Um, the best time to exercise is when you're actually gonna do it. So, um, not everyone is good at exercising in the morning. That would be my preference. I like to exercise before breakfast. Um, that doesn't always happen, but as soon as it gets to afternoon, I'm pretty much useless. So if I'm relying on the afternoon for my exercise time, I, I would say many times, one, I wouldn't do the workout I had planned or I would skip it and find a reason not to do it. Um, so for you, everyone's the same, like if you, Find the time of day, one, that you're going to do it. Um, and then two, when you feel the most energized, when you feel like you work out the best. Um, and you want to pay attention to your body too because that's how people get injured or don't enjoy their workouts because they might be overtraining or they're working out a time of day where their body actually doesn't feel good. So you don't actually feel good from the exercise. Um, that being said, all movement is worthwhile. So do what you can. And, um, and don't think, oh, I need to find an hour. You could, you could do 10 minute bursts throughout the day if that works best for you or, or two 20 minute bursts, like whatever you can fit in and make work for you is, is going to be the best way for you to exercise. Um, and I've asked what my favorite workouts are, which I find that a hard question. I do enjoy working out with weights i'm um, doing kettlebells i don't lift anything too heavy um and i have a love hate relationship with running but i never regret once i've been and i do find it quite satisfying i love boxing and i love doing a bit of jiu-jitsu or wrestling I find that really fun and of course footy i love playing footy i love going to footy, footy training and that's just finished at the moment so i feel like there's a bit of a avoid in my week of that training so now I need to work out all right what am I going to do on the Monday and Thursday when I normally be at training um 
and just trying to keep my running up so I keep fit for next season as well. And the last question is about my favorite topic, sleep. So I got asked what are the main things I do to help my sleep. And I start thinking about sleep as soon as I've woken up. So the first thing is making sure I get morning light. Um, and I like in the ideal world, I would get outside for 20 minutes of morning sunshine within half an hour of waking up, not always possible, but I do make sure that the windows are always open in this room. If it's a dark day, having out one of our lights on in the lounge room and that light is, um, sort of replicates the sunlight. So on a cloudy day, or if it's just a big inside day, I'm getting light from that way. Um, it's great when I've got a client outdoors in the morning because then I can go outside and be outside. So I'd say morning light would be the first thing I'd do. And then the next would be um, swapping to decaf coffee or to herbal teas after about 10 o'clock. So it'd be a rare day I'd have a coffee after that. I found every cafe now serves decaf. I've also buy a decaf I really enjoy. So it's really not become a big thing for me to not um, have coffee after that time and I really like herbal tea so yeah that also fills the void of an early coffee finish um, and then the next thing I do is get afternoon sunlight so around 4 4 30 I try to be outside um, for a little bit to get a bit of sunlight as well which is important for your circadian rhythm and then as evening approaches we have lights in our house that um, are have no blue light in them. So I would only use those in the evening from the time I need to turn them on, I guess, like till it gets dark. Um, so we have them in the kitchen, in the lounge room and in the bathroom. So that just means I'm not getting that blue light, which keeps you like switched on and alert. Um, try to eat dinner by, if I'm going to bed between 10, 10, 30, I'd want to have all my food and fluid done by eight. So that's generally the goal. Um, and then turning the TV brightness down as well, I find is very helpful. And after dinner, generally we would hang out with no lights on. Um, it's just no need. Um, and that just sets up for a really nice unwind time. So putting phones away, devices away, um, and yeah, just watching TV with the brightness down, with no lights on. Um, yeah, really helps unwind. Um, and I think that unwind time makes a big difference to me. One thing I've noticed is if, if I've been out and I come home and I try to go straight to bed, that I, I will not fall asleep. So even if it feels like you're getting to bed that little bit later, I feel like giving yourself that 20 minutes, half an hour unwind time really makes a difference. Um, and the other thing is just trying to go to bed and wake up at a similar time each day. So within the hour. Um, and I feel like since I've been doing those things that my sleep has improved, definitely. Um, and I, my sleep's not perfect every night, no one's is, but generally my sleep's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. If you've got any other questions, please comment below. I can definitely make another one of these videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking. And I'll see you next time. Bye.